Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. It's going to be a skin tone how-to or how I tutorial type of esque video. And I will be creating a vitiligo skin tone. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a skin condition where you lose pigmentation um, on parts on your body. It can be you know, your hands, your face, anywhere on your body. And it basically just means that there's like, well, like as if you have like two different skin tones. So I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but I didn't have the, um, I didn't have like, I wouldn't say the skills, but I want to do it full on. I didn't want to, excuse my harshness here, directness, but I didn't want to half-ass it. So I told myself that I was going to wait until I felt, I felt like I had the skills with skin tones to do it. And the other day I really want to play with skin tones. So, so I pulled this book out because I'm in the middle of moving right now. And this is the only Jasmine Beckett Griffith book that I have not worked in. I am really, I've been really intimidated by this book because I love all the images and I was like, I need to just get over this and I wanted to play with skin tones and Jasmine's books are the perfect ones for skin tones. So, I pulled out, um, a page and I knew I wanted to play with skin tones. I was like, well, I think this would be the perfect time to try and create the Vitiligo skin tone that I really wanted to and I came up with this. So this is kind of what I'll be showing you how to uh, re uh, replicate. Um, I did I have this picture here to show her having you with the tail and like the little patches over the, um, the chest and everything that I figured, <coughs> excuse me, but with the hair coming down, I figured I'd do it as, you know, if she wasn't wearing anything and it has that she's um, a nymph slash water, uh, uh, nymph slash uh, water, yeah, nymph slash mermaid and with the storyline of like them trying to like lower, uh, like the mermaids lowering the sailors back in the time, you know, I figured it kind of fit. And I wanted to play the skin tone more than trying to do like the patches and stuff like that. So I create this and that's what we're going to try to replicate today. I'm not going to do the same exact thing because the, oops, sorry about that. With Vitiligo, it's not the same. So if I wanted to re redo this one, um, if like... When I redo it, it's not going to be the same, basically. It's not, like, two people don't have the same kind of, um, um, loss of pigmentation. So, um, with this one here, I want to really focus on the brown skin with the other side popping out. So, I did most of her face in a deeper brown, which is, like, one eye, um, open more. So, the one we're going to be showing you how to do today is this one. This was almost the second, or like the other picture that I wanted to do. So this is very easy actually to do, and it's a very easy one to do if you are someone who likes to straight color or do coloring with a lot of shading and blending and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you how I do it with all the blending shading stuff like that. But I'll let you know when you can, if you're just as someone who has straight colors, how you can just do this as well. So I'll be using Prisma colors because that's kind of go-to I'm kind of like playing around here I think that I will be trying to test out this skin tone with my polys and other stuff like that so in the future I will possibly or probably do an update one with different pencils so you're going to need PC 2, uh, 927 which is light flesh you're going to need peach which is PC, uh, PC 939 <clears throat> nectar which is PC 1092 uh, grade lavender, which is PC 1029. Grade lavender, very lightly underneath the lighter skin tone, really makes it pop and look more realistic. I did over here on this picture, and it really, I don't know how well it picks up on camera, but almost makes the skin look translucent. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a frog in my throat, my, my frog in my throat today. This is light umber, which is PC 941. They have Sienna Brown PC945. We have Dark Umber PC947. Just ignore the lines there for some reason. This pencil went to keep spinning in my pencil sharpener. And we have Sepia, which is PC948. So the simple part and the beginning part of this is to map out where you want the patches to be, basically, or the discoloration so like that so we're zooming in we'll do her face first i actually probably can get the 
whole thing in the frame there, actually. So, so I'm going to start with the light flesh. And you're probably not going to really be able to see this, but I want to do a mapping, and you'll be able to see that in a second. So I want the nose part to be with the light flesh. I'm going to actually connect the eye here. Connect to the top part of the lip here. Go there. And then this part of the eye is going to kind of go and disappear up to there. And this part is going to kind of come up here. And you're going to meet up in here. So now it's in there, kind of just do a very light coating of where it would be. It's a little easier to see in person than it probably is on camera. You probably can't even see what I'm doing. Okay, and then I'm gonna do right over here and around to right there. And this part will be in light flesh will be the light part. And then I think it's all gonna be on the face. Maybe just this, let's connect this part to right in here. So this part, the rest will be in the darker skin tone. So now we're gonna take your light umber and very lightly follow the lines and do a light layer over everything. Where it's going to be deeper. Okay, and then this part went to right in here. Color it so light that I can barely see it myself. Okay, and this part went. Sorry if you see my face leaning over here, I have to like kind of a look right there. And this will make it easier for you to kind of know where everything goes. Okay, now over here, this part, take over here, no. Okay, so this part over here is all going to be deeper. Okay, and then this part is, yeah, it's all the upper part is in the later. Just doing a light layer for this time being, and then right up in here. That's where you map everything out. Now, if you straight color, this would be where you just kind of, you know, finish up and straight color, go back to your, you know, your coloring and stuff like that, your colors. So what I'm going to do, because it's a smaller image, I'm going to take the light flesh down her neck, I think down like this, to the shell, and then, um, We'll do top part here. So now the it doesn't always go kind of like in symmetrical areas like I'm kind of doing or have like a flow to it. So if you want to add kind of like a little more splotchiness and stuff like that to it, you can. But for the most part, I'm just trying to block it off and make it kind of easier. Okay, so now I take the darker color, just go where the dark's gonna be. Okay. 
So it really isn't like a rhyme or reason with a vitiligo. It just goes in different areas. So it's all up to you where you want to kind of map it all out. Okay. So now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start with the deeper skin tone, but I'm not going to finish it. What I mean by that is I am going to go shade everything in, get it to the top layer again, um, go through everything. Sorry, I'm trying to like um, put my leg up and I hit the thing. Um, I'm going to shade everything in, but you don't want to finish the dark, darker part of the skin before you do finish up the lighter part because it's easier to smudge um, the deeper or uh, the darker brown colors into you will kind of muddle up the lighter stuff if you kind of mix them and unburnish um, your paper with the deeper part first. So that being said, I am going to um, shade everything in with the brown before I do the final kind of blending layer when I come back and do the um, lighter skin first. So now that this base layer is already done. Now, oh, now that the base layer is finally done, I'm gonna start shading with the end. I'm gonna I have the lightest layer down, which is light umber. And I'm gonna move on to sienna brown, dark umber, and then sepia. So I'm gonna speed everything up. You can kind of watch how we shade it in. It's basically like just a regular shade in different areas. Um, and I'll be right back. Scratch that. I started to um, do that, but the way I have this portion of the skin, easier to actually start with the lighter skin here. So I know where to put this shadowing. So I'm gonna do peach, go around the hairline. Oops. <clears throat> Got to the ears. I'll do this ear as well later. Kind of go through the ear. Just kind of go down the chin. And now do nectar. And this is where you will see um, <clears throat> where the gray lavender comes in. Let me actually zoom you in a bit. You see the kind of redness of that nectar with just a very light touch of the gray lavender over the entire portion. It really kind of makes it look a little more translucent. Even the more you blend on top of it, or layer on top of it, I should say. Okay, I'm gonna pull you out like that again. So this peach again. Okay, so now I know kind of where to build off of. So I'm going to go back now to Sienna. Kind of incorporate the colors together. Actually, I wasn't even done with that because I had to do light umber. I completely forgot that step. <laughs> I forgot I always use light umber on the edge of the shadows there. Wasn't even thinking. There, that brings it better together. Okay. I always put darker around all these eyelashes that Jasmine does. Because I feel like they be casting a shadow with how big they are. And always put a little on top of the eyebrow. Okay, this is all be darker. 
Okay, you're gonna put underneath the seashell. I think that looks good. Go over here. I'm just going to kind of take the nectar. It's kind of like piecing a puzzle together when you're coloring it. Because you can't fully shade everything like as you would because you have to keep kind of hopping back and forth. But the end result, once you have it all together, looks amazing. Okay. Pretty sure that was the skin and not a strand of hair. May have been a strand of hair. <laughs> Okay, that's, oh, that is not, that was part of the light skin. So I'm going to take the nectar, just kind of run it where it would be darker. Take the sienna brown again. What's gonna be hard is I kind of curved this here where her nose would go. So this side of her nose may seem like it is a little darker. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with the shadows. The eye will be a little bit easier because it's all kind of one color versus the other one. Gotta do the shadowing here. I forgot to up in here. Okay. If you hear any loud noise in a second before I, clip, I cut off the video, my cat is peeking through the door right now, underneath the door, and she might push it open. So lips, very easy, kind of just do like an M on top and a W on the bottom, you kind of just go like, whoop, match it up, match it up, shade that in. And then a very lightly go around. Chin is kind of go like that, add a little chin to it. Okay. Go underneath the eyebrow. And if you want to add in like makeup or something like that to the person, you can go ahead and do that as well. Okay, I'm gonna go down, keep the shading going. Get time to do a shade around. The giant shell here and the pearls. And I just kind of write down the shoulder. Okay, she left the door, so you might not hear it. Or she's getting a running jump. She does both sometimes. Okay. So now I got that done. I'm going to move on to the second deepest, which is dark umber. Going to kind of deepen in underneath the eyebrows. And normally when I'm done before I fully finish up one of Jasmine's pictures, I will take a black pencil and kind of smoke the eyes out a little bit more. But I do that after I am fully, fully done because of the simple fact that black smudges so easy. And I don't want to accidentally smudge too much. Okay. Let's 
take that shadow in. You don't have to go down as far. There's that satellite umber for the darker part of the lighter skin tone. The lighter skin tone. Basically, when you do the shadowing and stuff like that and deepen it up, you just want to go around the edges. You don't want to go down as far. You can, but I like to kind of not go down as far. Just kind of stick to the edges. And then... that light umber there because it connects the two okay not gonna go down as far there do the same thing underneath the eyelashes and up here in the corner and right down in here okay just a little bit more around the lips <clears throat> Get the shading underneath the neck. And around all the necklace pieces. So you just kind of want to deepen up the areas, but not too, too much. So you bring out too far, then it'll go a little too dark. Now, with the sepia, which is our darkest, it's just going to be basically right along the edges of everything. So you just want that shadow to be deepened. without it coming out too far and being too dark. Same thing a little behind the eye, the eyelashes, and in the deeper corner. Okay, now you can work your way back through the colors and kind of fully smoke it out. It's basically very lightly with your dirty eye dark umber. You're going to go in circular motions and just bring that kind of sepia into the other colors and just lightly kind of just smoke it out. And just in the areas that you want. You don't have to go over every single area, just the areas that you want it to be kind of brought and out just a little bit more.
And now on to the Sienna Brown. This color you are going to pull out <clears throat> to the to the area that we did before, but slightly more. <coughs> Excuse me. And you're not going to do as heavy. You don't want to do heavy pressure. You just want to keep it very light so you can still build it all up. Okay, now, this is where you're going to leave the brown parts for now, and we're going to move on to the lighter skin. So we already have our base layer down of light, um, light peach, so we're going to go on to peach, and do the same thing, pretty much the same thing we did over here, in all the areas that the light skin, or the lighter patches are. So, okay, we're going to draw in the nose, okay, right there, I always try to go right where, like, the, the nostrils are with the nose, and go up a little bit, then curve it out. And meet pretty much right with the eyebrows, if you can. Sometimes it's hard to do that, but... And it doesn't always come out even. <laughs> but when you zoom out, it looks evener. A little bit more even. Lightly kind of bring that out. Kind of create depth. Okay, I'm going to add in... A little curve right there for the nose. You probably should zoom in when I do that portion. Then do you're gonna do a U right here for like the little cube of the bow. Okay, do finish up the eyes like I did over here. But obviously with the lighter, go around the nostrils to kind of add a little bit more depth. Okay. I bring that shadowing down. And I'm going to bring the peach just a little bit into it because they will mix together. A little bit right there above the eye. Okay. Now down here, we take that shadowing. Kind of bring it in with that. And then take this down here. It's basically the same process. So yeah, it's basically the same process, just with a different skin tone. Now we're gonna take nectar. You know, like areas like that, you can blend them together because even though you can go over it with the brown in the other section, it will work together. Okay. And right neck up there and there, so I just kind of bring that down just a little more. The nose. You're not going to go all the way up the nose. 
you're just going to kind of do it right to there, to that curve, like that. There. Now, red lavender. No. Nope. Now, lay umber. I always keep forgetting this. My final layer in the light skin. And I'm sorry if you see a little kind of transition throughout this video. I'm trying to like cough and like clear my throat off camera because I have like a frog in my throat like I said today. Very lightly deepen up the ridge of the nose. Okay. Now very lightly. You don't want to do too heavy of a hand. Light uh, of graded lavender. I'm going to do over the brown and everything that kind of ties it together. I have not used grade lavender on deeper skin tone before until just the other day. Didn't notice any kind of difference, but to make it even, I'm doing it. I know people have said to use like non-photo blue, I think it is, on skin, as well as the grape lavender. I went a little too heavy when I tried that and it kind of made my skin look blue. But I'm wondering if the non-photo blue works better with the deeper skin tone. If it makes it more, look more translucent. I'll have to try that. Because of how small my light peach is getting. When I use my Prismas, it's going to be deep skin tones for a little bit till I get my uh, light peach stocked back up. <clears throat> okay, now, work your way back from dark to light and near the light spots. Kind of pulling the colors out a little bit more. <coughs> and doing light circles. Kind of blend and marry those colors together. Now peach, peach, you, oop. The peach you can um, you take all the way up the nose. You know what I just realized? I haven't been doing this eye. My brain tonight's not with it, I don't think. There we go. Take the peach. And with my pencils, I like to work in light circles when I'm doing any kind of skin tone because it makes for an even transition when you do that blending layer. So now, the reason, like I said, because we're now down to the final layer of um, blending, the blending burnish layer. I like to do this, the light skin first, the light patches first. Because if you sit here with your finger and smudge like this, the darker skin will smudge more than the lighter skin will. So, I do the lighter portion first. So, with a medium pressure, just kind of work those lighter portions together. This is one of those things, the whole time I did it, the other day, it's like, oh my god, this is not going to look right. I'm going to have to rip this page out. And then I did it, 
And I was like, oh my god, this looks amazing. So I was really happy that I got the confidence to actually do it. Because the whole time you're kind of doing it, it just doesn't feel like you're doing it the right way. And then when it's finished, like, I like how this turned out. And it doesn't look... Um, complete until you do both parts of it. The whole time you're doing it, you know, when you're doing like a regular skin tone, it's just like one tone. You kind of feel like the whole time, like, okay, I'm working towards something. But with this, it's like, you have to wait until you're finished. Like, okay, that's what I did. And it comes out super beautiful. And I'm happy that I did this so that way I can bring kind of some representation, I guess, to it. I looked on, on YouTube I just tonight before I started filming, like, I didn't see any. So, hopefully maybe people who are a little better at skin will, um pick this idea up and really show people the ins and outs of it. Because if you have a YouTube or color tube and you are really good at skin, feel free to kind of take the reins and perfect it. Because I'm still new with skin. But I like to kind of branch out and try new things. Okay. So there is the light portions, but we are not done with this just yet, which I'll show you in a second why. So now, take your light umber and we're going to work through the dark sections. So, same thing, medium to hard pressure and work in circles. I've learned that with Prismas, I used to just go like right down to the paper for that final blend and burnish. No. Medium pressure is the best pressure for doing that kind of final layer. To kind of go that way, I don't kind of go over. Yeah, medium pressure is the best blending pressure with Prisma. Because of the simple fact that if I were to push super hard, you would not see the colors underneath this brown. All you would see would be the light umber. Okay, zoom in for the face. Prisms are dusty, so keep something by to kind of 
kind of get that dust off. Don't go like that because that will smudge. Okay, and sorry about that. My phone decided to die on me during the eye of eye finishing up that blending portion, but I charged it up enough. I've been kind of preoccupied today watching Orange, catching up on Orange's New Black before moving. Um, so no spoilers and comments. I'm only halfway through season six right now. So we're not fully done yet. So we're going to go back to the light peach and we're going to do the thing that I told you not to do, which is smudge. Which you're going to take this light peach very lightly. And you're going to go all the way down the darker portions. And the reason for that is it's going to take these harsh kind of lines that we've done in mapping. And it's going to blend them together. Gonna kind of blend them together and you're not gonna see the kind of just like lines. And I like a blurring effect almost. That way there's no it doesn't look like it's, it looks like it's one skin tone, not like two drawn together. There. We are done. So there you have a kind of a vitiligo skin tutorial. Obviously it's kind of just a small, sorry, bump the thing down. Smaller one because I just did a portrait, but um, you can see what it looks like if you do the whole body with the one I did before. See, I really want to do a skin tone for a while, but I just never really had the, I guess, I would say courage to do it or the nerve to do it, but I really like how it turns out when you do do it. So I'll definitely be trying to incorporate this more often into coloring um, because I like to use try all skin tones out. Um, and the nice thing about this is, well, you can mix and match this if you want to. You can do it with um, like a mermaid. You can do it with, if you want to mix it up and do like, maybe like, green skin maybe do like a darker green spots and lighter green spots or pinks and purples mix them up together you don't have to just use kind of like human skin tones you can mix up with different ones and like i said you can also do this if you're uh, something like a straight color you just kind of map the portions out and then color it in so it's a very versatile skin tone or a skin tone tutorial at least i should hope it should be so i hope you all enjoyed this kind of quick tutorial on how i did my other page here, I'll definitely hopefully have it finished by the time I do my July-August coloring wrap-up. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoy this. I don't know how long, so maybe quick video, possibly not quick video. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. I hope you all have an amazing day. Until next time, happy coloring.